Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Sonia and today we're talking about vitamin C. What it is, how it helps your body. Is it research based? Does it help with common colds? And we're going to be looking at a few things like that. So if you like information that is real, valid research base, then you've come to the right spot. So check out my description box below it has all the references for the material that I have researched. So what is vitamin C or ascorbic acid is the other name for it. Oh, do you know I can juggle? Look, good huh? So what is ascorbic acid or vitamin C? Well, vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin and it's necessary for all our bodily functions. How does our body use an antioxidant like vitamin C? Well, it uses it to detoxify substances. It also uses it to help fight infections, bacterial infections, and it's also distributed through the body and found in the highest concentrations in our brain. So it acts as a neuroprotective, it has a neuroprotective function as well as it helps um, regulate DNA and our neurotransmitters. It helps like send messages between our neurotransmitters. So it's important for our brain and definitely for our skin. Well, it's also a good thing. Let's not forget about skincare, shall we? Um, this is the Paula's Choice Vitamin C 15% uh, serum. And I put this in my daily moisturizer. You can see it's like just drippy and orange, like so. I put that in any moisturizer. It can be cheap one, whatever. I use CeraVe, which is like 10 bucks from the chemist warehouse. Um, so I pop that in my daily moisturizer and I use it to protect my skin from sun rays, environmental pollutant. I also use, of course, sunscreen as well. Um, and But what it does is it helps improve collagen as well, brightens the skin and reduces pigmentation, which is great for all skin types and definitely, um, you know, for guys and girls as well. So don't think guys that you need to miss out on face care and every day because you don't. And then the last thing that vitamin C or ascorbic acid does is it helps with the absorption of iron. If you're low in iron and you're taking supplements or you have iron infusions regularly, then you need to make sure that your vitamin C intake is sufficient. Okay, so that means eating more green leafy vegetables and fruit in your diet, pretty easily fixed, or take a supplement if you have to. The only time that you don't need extra vitamin C to increase iron absorption if you have a familial hereditary condition, uh, such as thalassemia or hemochromatosis. It's often thought that vitamin C helps prevent or helps with the common cold. Now, this is not research-based. There is no research that actually shows that it actually prevents or helps with the symptoms of the common cold. So um, unlike zinc, and I'll put a link here, uh, zinc does actually reduce symptoms by 30%. You will hear people say, oh, you need more vitamin C because that's what we've been told for a very long time by our parents or whoever, okay, or vitamin companies maybe. Um, so definitely, you know, we understand the common cold as runny nose, cough, cough uh, you know, stuffy nose, sore throat, maybe a fever, maybe not. That's the symptoms of a common cold, okay, and that has been shown that, you know, vitamin C does not help with any of those symptoms. Um, however, there are things that it does help with, and I'll explain that later. So antioxidants, which vitamin C is an antioxidant, are helpful to our bodies. We know that. We've just talked about that. So what does the antioxidant do? Well, its role is to go around the body, find a radical, free radical, and hand over an electron and make it not dangerous to us anymore. So in, that's simple terms. It's a bit like the rainbow fish. 
Do you know the rainbow fish story where there's this beautiful fish, it's got scales on it and it hands one over to another fish? Well, this is what happens with antioxidants. They come across some free radical and it's like it's it's taking cells, it's taking oxidant, you know, killing cells. And so what it does is it gives the free radical cell a electron which virtually neutralizes it. It doesn't have to look for anything anymore. But the antioxidant doesn't become unstable or anything like that because it is a stabilized cell, so it just stays as it is. And this then stops searching for other cells to kill and, and scavenge from. And so that's the way that antioxidants work. So for infection, antioxidants are great, you know, for our body. They, they help us when we need it most. Um, so the potential for antioxidants in preventing disease has attracted lots of attention and, you know, there's lots of research currently going on in regards to that as well, which is good. Where do we get our vitamin C from? Well, a common myth is that we get it from oranges, that we get the most vitamin C from an orange. However, that's not true. If we eat a rainbow colored, and I'm sure you've probably heard this, eat a rainbow colored diet. Well, what does that mean? That means greens, reds, yellows, all sorts of green, everything, all the colors. Okay, that means that you'll get enough vitamin C in your daily intake. And the benefit to that is it's also, and this, these are vegetables as well as fruits, and the benefit to that is you're eating fiber as well, which your gut loves, your gut biome loves fiber from these vegetables and from these fruits. And it, it loves all this. And our gut biome helps with a lot of other things. So if we're feeding it fiber and all good things, it just helps our body thrive. And when our bodies are thriving, then it makes it less susceptible to nasty bugs floating around. True. The types of food that we can get large amounts of vitamin C in descending order is things like bok choy, bok choy, highest in vitamin C. These green vegetables, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cantaloupe or rock melon, depends where you live, what you understand it to be, cauliflower, currants, then comes the citrus fruits and then things like guava, kale, kiwi, mango, pawpaw, parsley, peas, pineapple, red peppers, strawberries and tomatoes to name a few. So that's an extensive list. If you're eating bits and pieces from that, you're all good, okay? You're good. A common misconception is that the more vitamin C you take, the better you're going to be. Nothing's going to touch you if you take a high amount of vitamin C. But what happens is, the thing is, your body can only tolerate or absorb up to about 500 milligrams of vitamin C. And then after that, it causes things like gut osmotic diarrhea. Okay, so you get the shits because you have too much vitamin C. So you'll have to go to the toilet and you'll be running to the toilet and you also can get abdo pain. So you don't want that happening. Uh, and, you know, as um, why take more when you don't, when your body doesn't or can't utilize it. Now, that's not true um, in regards to having IV vitamin or ascorbic acid vitamin C. Vitamin C given or ascorbic acid given IV um, in high doses works very well and our body is able to synthesize this easier. So it's all about orally. So when we take a supplement in a tablet form, it just doesn't work as well as actually eating a whole healthy diet unless it's given IV. And I don't know about you, but I don't have IV ascorbic acid available to me every day, do you? No. So that's why it's used uh, in hospitals with patients who are critically ill, uh, those who are um, undergoing surgery. This is what, um, and trauma, 
it has been found that IV ascorbic acid is actually very helpful because the body is in physiological stress, okay, and it works really well, as in helps with wound healing and recovery. And what I've noted at work is that postoperatively patients are actually ordered vitamin C ascorbic acid on the drug chart to take regularly postoperatively. And this is to help with wound healing, knowing that, you know, a, a patient who may be in hospital for a few days may, necess- may not necessarily be um, able to access all the fresh fruit and vegetables they normally eat. Um, plus their body has been under physiological stress and trauma, um, surgical trauma. So having more um, vitamin C or ascorbic acid, all those antioxidants on board helps our body. So what does the research say? We're all about research. Remember, this is a research-based YouTube channel. So the research says in a Cochrane review of many, many scientific journals. And so a review of the specific uh, studies looking into vitamin C showed that in the trials that were, uh, you know, given to certain people and whatever, doses of 200 or more actually didn't have any benefit to anyone. And that's across the whole database. What they did find in five trials were that there were 598 marathon runners, skiers, soldiers on subarctic exercises who did benefit from vitamin C uh, and it reduced the incidence of colds by light 52%. However, this uh, um, finding actually found that Vitamin C seems to uh, influence resistance to viral infections under extreme periods of exercise, severe physical exercise. Now, I don't know about you, but that definitely is not me. Um, You know, I will not be in the subarctic doing some exercise in below zero temperatures. No, that's not me. Um, So for the general population, that is not the case. And that is what the research says. I hope this information has been helpful for you today. Definitely, you know, that is part of my channel's goal is to inform you with research-based information. I get to learn along the way as well. I hope you've enjoyed this. Definitely hit the thumbs up right in the comment section below and share with your friends. Okay, so bye for now.